Hello there everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane. Please let me know that you're in class by leaving a comment down in the doobly-doo, just like these amazing individuals did in the last class. What I would like you to do as well is if you've joined us on Discord, please put in brackets uh, which house you're in as well. So I would put, for instance, here sir, in brackets, Amano, because I've been sorted into house Amano. If you do want to join us on Discord, then use the link in the video. You'll be put through the sorting quiz. It's a bit Harry Pottery, and I will see you in there. In this class, what we're going to be doing is taking the work we've done so far and turning it into more of a game. So the first thing we'll do is make it so that a ball will spawn when we want it to. So we're going to make it spawn at the paddle, and then we'll make it so that until you fire the ball, it will follow the paddle side to side so you can aim. That's what this step's going to be all about. It's very blueprinty. We're getting into proper coding now. So let's just do it, shall we? Yeah, okay, let's do it. So what we want to do now is to get the ball to spawn, when we spawn a new ball, at the paddle, wherever the paddle is. So we need to first set that up in the paddle blueprint. So I'll open that up, the player paddle. Here she is. And what I want to do is go into the viewport section of this, and I want to add an arrow component. So here under Add Component, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that it's listed under Utilities, or you can just search for Arrow. And you won't, won't really be able to see it, but if I just move this out of here, this is what the arrow looks like. Funnily enough, it looks a lot like an arrow. So I'm just going to move it about 90, um, and I've moved it minus 90. You can see on Y, I've moved it minus 90. And that's because I already know um, which way mine's facing because I did test this before I did the video um, and then what I also want to do is rotate this so I'm going to start rotating it this way and I want it to be at an angle so just using this I can't get 45 degrees so I'm at minus 40 so I'm going to make that minus 45 and what that does is puts this arrow component so that it's above my paddle or it will appear above the paddle in the game and it also means that when it launches the ball, I can make it launch at a 45 degree angle because we can follow the direction of that arrow. What we need to do now, though, is check that that's worked. So what I'm going to do is check in rendering. Visible, yes, but currently it's going to be hidden in game. And when the game's finished, we want it to be hidden. But for now, we need to be able to see it. So I'm just going to deselect that. I'm going to compile my blueprint. And then we'll go to play and test it out. And you can see that that has appeared exactly where we want it to. The problem though is that it's not yet following the paddle and we need that arrow to go with the paddle so that let's say we lose a ball and we want to spawn a new ball, ball over here then the arrow needs to be there so we can spawn from there. So we're not there yet. The way that we need to do this is we'll go back into this player paddle. You can see here we've got the default scene root paddle arrow and what we can do is make the arrow if we just drag that onto there we can attach the arrow to the paddle. So we'll do that and you'll see you get a little sort of dependency thing going on here. And then we'll compile that again and we'll test. And now when I move side to side, you can see that the arrow is following the paddle, which is going to be very, very useful for us when we want to spawn balls. The next thing we want to get set up is give the, the player paddle the ability to spawn a ball. And we're going to go back into our blueprint for that. And we need to be in the event graph. Here we are. So I'm going to create a new custom event as I am fond of doing. So right click custom event and I'm going to call this event new ball. That seems like quite a descriptive name for this. So when this is called I want to do a spawn actor from class. There it is. And so anytime this event runs it's going to spawn an actor which makes sense because we want it to spawn the ball. So from this class here what we're going to do is tell it that we want the ball. So there's BP underscore ball, which is what I called my ball. So that's now going to be the one that gets spawned whenever we call this. And then what we need to do is you see we've got a spawn transform. And that the information we can give that is where we want this ball to spawn, which is going to be at the arrow. So we need to set that up as well. So what we're going to do is get a reference to the arrow. So I'm going to drag this in and we're going to get it. And then we need to get the position of that. So we're going to drag out of the arrow and we're going to do a get world transform. 
and then the return value is going to go into spawn transform. So let's review what we've got going on here. So whatever new ball is called, it's going to spawn a ball. There you go. And it's going to spawn it at the position of the arrow, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit. Let's just put all these things here. Get, oh, no, not like that. Get these two, and I'm just going to bring those up a little bit. I'm going to put this all in the comment, which I'm going to call spawn ball. Good name. And then we need to be able to test this out. So I'm just going to create a new event, which is begin play. So whenever the game starts, and we're going to do spawn ball. No, we didn't call it that. We called it new ball, didn't we? New ball. So at the beginning of the game, it's going to spawn a ball. And we're going to be able to test this in a minute. But it won't work yet because there's already a ball in there. And the ball's launching as well. All we want to do is get it to spawn at this stage. So we need to disconnect a few things as well. So we'll go into the... Let's just compile this. We'll go into the level. We'll delete the ball that's already there so we don't get confused. Lovely. And then we're going to go into the ball blueprint for a second. And somewhere... Yeah. So on event begin play, the ball is being launched. We don't want that just yet. So I'm just going to disconnect that by holding Alt on my keyboard and clicking on the wire that connects them. That's disconnected that. And I'll compile that. So now let's test this and see if it's working. It is. So we've got a ball that's being spawned at the beginning of the game at the location of the arrow, at the base of the arrow. The next problem we've got is that before we launch it, we want the ball to follow the paddle. We want it to go with it. So that's the next thing we're going to set up in this step. So let's just um, stop testing. Right, the next thing I want to do then is I'm going to go back into my player paddle. Here it is. And what we can do is we're making this blueprint, the paddle, spawn the ball. Um, but they're different blueprints. So what we can do is if we want to do anything with the ball from within the paddle, it helps to have that as a variable that we can talk to. So at the moment, we know that this is the ball. So the return value is basically the ball. So what I'm going to do is just drag out of here. And then from the options I've got, one of the top ones here is promote to variable. So then we get this. So it's going to say, once you've got the ball, make it a variable. And there you go. You can see it's called new variable underscore zero. We're going to change that to ball. And then going forward within this blueprint, we can do things with the ball, which will be very helpful. Right, so now what we'll do is we'll go into the ball blueprint and we're going to make it so that the ball once it's spawned will follow the paddle while ever the ball's not in play so what we're going to do is create a new custom event custom event and we're going to call that update position there we go and so we're going to use this event to be the thing that updates the ball we only want this to happen though when the ball's not in play, so when it's not active. So to control that, we're going to create a Boolean variable. Booleans can either be true or false. So it's going to be, is the ball active? True. Yes, it's active. False. No, it's not. So whatever it's false, we can update the position. So we're going to create a new variable. Click here. And I'm going to call it active. Like that. And by default, let's just compile this. By default, you can see that that's set to false. It's not active, which is what we want for now. And then we can control whether or not it's active by setting this variable to true or false once we launch the ball or when the ball is dead. So we'll set that up later. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get this set up. So we'll get active and we're going to get it. And what we want is that whenever this is not true, so we're going to drag out of here and make a not Boolean. So if that's not active, we're going to create a branch. Now a branch is basically just an if statement. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. So we're gonna, in fact, if you even type if, you'll see that branch here, branch comes up. Um, but I'm gonna search for branch because that's what they're called in blueprints. So we'll create a branch like so. And so the first thing that this updated position is gonna do is check whether or not the ball's active. In order to move forward, it's not active, which will be true. And then we're going to get a set actor location there we go so this is going to set the actor location of the ball and we're going to relate that to the arrow but at the moment we don't have access to the arrow because that lives 
within the player paddle blueprint, this one here, not within the ball. So we're going to do something called casting to another blueprint. And we'll do this at the beginning of the game. We'll ask this blueprint to talk to the player paddle blueprint and say, um, I want access to something in your blueprint, which is going to be the arrow. So we'll set that up now. So just up at the top here, we've got this event begin play that's currently launching ball. I'm just going to put some more stuff over here that's going to talk to the, the player paddle blueprint. This is still disconnected for now. So just here, I'm going to right click and do get player controller. Just here. And then out of the return value, we're going to do get controlled pawn, which is our paddle. And then out of here, we're going to do cast to player paddle. There it is. So this is all tickety boo. And that's going to happen at begin play. So I'll just connect that up. So as soon as this happens, we're getting all this information from the player paddle. And then as blueprint player paddle, we're just going to promote this to a variable. And we're going to call that variable player paddle. So I know what it is. Oh, let's get rid of that capital L. Don't need that. So player paddle. And that now, at the beginning of the game, we're going to have access to player paddle. So that's one of the first things that the game's going to do when it starts up. It's going to say to the player paddle, can I have access to your blueprint? And then we've got access to that within this blueprint going forward. So that means we can now go back here and do stuff with that information. So what we need is a player paddle reference. So I'm going to drag that out here and we'll get that. And what we want to do, the thing that we're really interested in is the arrow. So I'm going to drag it out of here and type arrow and you can see I can get the arrow. So now I'm getting the position of the arrow, which is good. And from that, we need to get the world location, get world location, because we need to know the position of the arrow. That's why we're interested in it. And then the return value of this, this get world location information that we've got, we're going to put into the new location. So where we want the ball to be put. So the target is self, do it to the ball because we're working in the ball blueprint. And then if the ball is not in play, get the world location of the arrow and put the ball there. So that should make it follow it. But we need to then have something to trigger this update position to make it work. So somewhere in here, I think we already have event tick. We do. So you can see every tick is currently updating the velocity and angle of the ball. What I want it to do as well. In fact, let's just... Um, so that's just doing speed and angle. So we're going to have to do a little bit of reorganizing here. And we also want it to do every tick. Update position. There she is. And I'll put that in a comment just so I can see what I'm doing. Update position of ball. Just so I know what's happening there. Okay, so every tick, that's going to happen. And then what I would like to do is just neaten all this nonsense up a little bit. And then we'll put that in a comment as well. Update. Ah. Update. I can't spell. Ah. Update ball position. Went a little bit French there. Okay, so that should work. So at this stage, we're going to compile and test. Now, I know this isn't going to work, so I'm making myself look stupid on purpose here um, because there's one other thing we need to update, but I want to show you the problem before we fix it. So we're just going to compile that and then we'll test. And the idea now is that the ball should follow the paddle but it isn't doing and that's because we need to make one change so if we go into that BP ball it's because the ball isn't the root so it's happening to self which is the whole blueprint but the ball is kind of contained within the blueprint it isn't like the focus of the blueprint to fix that we're going to drag the ball here on top of the default scene root and then the ball becomes the default scene root so we'll compile and save that again and then play it and <laughs> we're getting somewhere now. So what that means is that when a new ball spawns, it will spawn where we want it to, which is going to be just above the paddle. And we can take aim before we launch it. So we can move left and right. And so if let's say we're just aiming for that last tricky block, we can put the, the paddle over here and then we can fire. Obviously, we've not implemented a launch ball yet. So 
we can't do anything with it, but we're getting there. In the next step, what we will be doing is getting it set up to launch the ball so that we've actually got a game that we can play. So I hope to see your beautiful ass in that next step. See you later. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody. And for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free and we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work, as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.